real pleasure to be here. Uh, so thank you for including me in this conference. And uh, I guess, yeah, I'm um, trying to give another go at that to become the Walmart guy uh, to keep that reputation up, I guess. Uh, in any case, um, so it's got a new title, uh, Using Four Corners to Import Goods. It may change it to containers. Uh, and uh, so this is an industry paper. I have to tell you a little bit about what this industry is. Uh, the industry of bringing goods into a big country like the U.S., right? So um, on, your, on your way into the airport, you may have passed a, a scene like this uh, uh, from Barcelona, but this particular scene is in Savannah, Georgia, and they're unloading containers off, uh, most of them from China, and the next step, here they are on the yard, but then this is a Walmart distribution center. All these are uh, individual containers, and then they open them up, um, and then just pull all the goods out, you know, by hand. These things are floor loaded and, uh, you know, a thousand of these cartons are in here and then they get redistributed um, uh, throughout the country. Okay, so uh, firms without a lot of scale, you know, the way they're going to do this is they're going to have one uh, DC and so all the goods get funneled through the one DC for the whole country and then get re redistributed. But retailers with, you know, big scale, and so today we'll be talking about Walmart, but really this is a paper about all these other firms, and, and I'll be bringing them in, I hope, uh, eventually. Um, uh, they've been using uh, what is called a Four Corners uh, Distribution uh, Center system at DC, um, where they have, you know, four plus DC spread out on both coasts, okay? And there's twin benefits from this strategy. First of all, uh, you know, we understand that water transport is a lot cheaper than land trans transport, right? So by having... Um, you know, DCs on, on both coasts, you have, um, you know, you, uh, you, can, you can substitute towards water to get the goods uh, uh, to places. But the second thing, you become less vulnerable to disruption, you know, if there's a, uh, you know, there's some port strike or, or something like that. So, um, so you have some redundancy, okay? So here, here's Walmart's import DC system, uh, and they have five of these import distribution centers. So we were just looking at one of them. Uh, that's the one, it's, it's right near the port of Savannah. Um, and so, yes, the, uh, you know, say the goods are coming from China, uh, they'll send it directly to LA to serve this market area, but to serve uh, Savannah or this, this region, the southeast, they'll just run it through the Panama Canal and, and, and then you get the, the cheap uh, tr tr uh, water transport, right? Now, um, and then there's the issue of disruption. So in 2002, uh, there was a, you know, a big, uh, you know, labor disturbance where um, uh, actually th these ports on the West Coast were like shut down completely for 11 days and, and uh, President Bush had to actually uh, use federal power to say, nope, we're opening these things, right? Um, and so there was just a major disturbance then. Uh, in, in 2002, Walmart actually didn't have these guys in the middle. All right, and so you know they were added subsequently. Some people argue to to uh, to give them some redundancy, right? So so one of the exercises we're going to be doing is is asking how when you go from um, you know having fewer of these things and add more, you know what does that do to um, uh, uh, the, what, what does the firm get out of it? Okay, um, so what are we doing here? We're going to develop a model of a four corners strategy of importing goods. And so the questions that we're going to be addressing here is first, where do we put uh, these uh, distribution centers? We just saw a, a, a location for five of them. Second, how do we allocate um, the import shares across these distribution centers? And then third, um, which ports do we use to get goods to a particular DC? Okay, and we're going to estimate the model with um, extremely detailed data for Walmart. All right, so I think that, you know, I think that's probably going to be one of the highlights of this paper, that we have really, really good information. We have uh, our sample is 1.7 million containers uh, over the 2007 to 2015 period. And this is really, this is over half of Walmart's ocean board imports. And, I mean, what's good about this is we have the product item numbers, like this stock keeping unit that Walmart has, so we know what's inside these containers. Um, and then we also know the source country, actually the city, we're not quite using that yet, but we will, the foreign port, the ship that gets used, the U.S. Part, port where it comes in, we have the date of arrival, and then the, uh, we know the destination D.C., so we know a lot. Uh, then on top of that, 
Um, you know, we've got more data like, uh, you know, on the time, you know, the, we know where the ship is. Well, let's get the GPS information about that ship so we know when it left a port in China. Um, and then we have some really, I think, interesting data on freight rates. So we're pulling all of this in, you know, so for what purpose? Well, um, well, let's, let's get, we're gonna do, we have to nail down some, uh, uh, some facts about Walmart's behavior that we're going to need to, to answer the questions that we're going to talk about in a second. But, uh, you know, one fact has to do with that the source countries vary in the relative distance to the east and west coast, right? So um, does this affect choice of port, conditional on where you want to send? Yes, right? So that'll be, that's pretty obvious. To get to that Chicago, D.C., if you're going from China, it's easier to use the port on the west coast. If you're coming from India, it's better to go through Su Suez Canal and you go through the east coast, right? But what about the effect on import shares uh, across the DCs, right? So, um, I mean, let's imagine if you just had two, uh, you know, had a, uh, let's say you had a DC here and a DC there, um, right? So now if you think it's goods from China, well, if you're coming from China, that's relatively close to here, you would tend to say, well, let's put, have a, a greater share of goods going to LA and a, a less of a share going to Savannah because that's more expensive to get to. Whereas from India, it's actually cheaper to get to here, and you would give a, a higher share over here, right? Uh, but the problem then is it, it may get in the way of trying to exploit scale economies of your DC because you're starting to treat different goods differently. And uh, um, so anyway, so what does Walmart do? Well, the answer is, uh, as we'll see, um, uh, they, they don't customize the import shares by source country, and this will be one of the facts about it. So they pretty much have to solve this sort of, okay, we're gonna run our DCs uh, the same independent of source country. Um, the next issue is uh, how does Walmart respond to a short run shock in a port disruption? Because we're gonna, they're gonna see this in our data. There was a, a big port disruption just in uh, 2015, uh, again on the West Coast, and, and we're gonna get to see how Walmart responded to that. And, and the, 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 you know, the short answer is, uh, you know, where they could, they could, they change their, uh, um, the ports that they use, right? Uh, that's something, in a very short run, they can do something about that. But the, uh, the allocations across the uh, distrib uh, uh, distribution centers, they, they didn't change that. Okay, that's more of a long run decision. Um, okay, so, um, so what are the sort of the bottom lines here? Uh, uh, so the first thing we're going to be focusing on in terms of a bottom line is, is what is the effect of, uh, on marginal transportation costs um, of adopting this four corner system. So you have this big scale and you can run, you know, five of these things versus say what you were doing in 2002 with only three. Um, and we're going to, uh, uh, you know, report that it's going to save about uh, uh, $200 or $300 per container which is, uh, you know, it's, it's about 3,000 to 4,000, so we're talking a little bit less than 10% of transportation costs. Um, I think it's a big number. Uh, some of these goods have just, the, the value of the goods is only, f f you know, $30,000, $50,000 in the whole box. So it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's a substantial percentage. The scale economies are, are, are what I think are pretty big. Um, we'll save this to talk about the margins till later. Um, and what about, what about the degree of reduced vulnerability disruption? You know, it's going to help, uh, as we're going to see, but uh, th those West Coast uh, dock workers still have Walmart by the neck in, in some sense. It's, it, uh, um, as we'll see, based on um, how they were able to react into the last time, um, it's, it's hard for even a, a Walmart to, to react. So uh, Walmart's better than some of the little companies that are really stuck, but uh, um, you know, Walmart is still stuck by these guys. Okay, um, and so just in the interest of time, I'm going to skip discussion of literature except to say, just you know, like, yes. So do they change their destination, the port destination, after the ship has departed? I mean, oh, they take yeah, I think they, they did they that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, uh, during the, the crisis uh, in last January, so st instead of stuff going to L.A., they just popped up to, to uh, San Francisco, uh, Oakland, for example. So. Um, and then there, so there was some of that kind of substitution going on. I had in mind, more well, like if there is a ship coming, and maybe rather than going to Savannah, say if Savannah is congested, could, could, it, could I take the ship to Houston? Do they, do, does the ship yeah, know I was, where that, it's that, going? Yeah, yeah, no, that, I, I, okay. there, during the, I mean, normally it goes to one place, okay. but during this big uh, 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 thing, okay. this big slowdown, uh, okay. they, they were re rerouting things to Oakland port because that was, uh, even though it's the same union, 
oh, they, they, uh, it was easier. Uh, Oakland was moving. So th th there are those kinds of but things happening. Oh no, but okay. Well, um, well, well um, I'm going to show you that they didn't change the DCs. Okay. Okay, that's a, a much more complicated thing because Walmart has this big complicated system, right? So the stuff goes to the DCs and then there's actually sub downstream DCs and they have a, a big system. So it's hard to mess with that. And so I'll show you something and, and I think it's pretty convincing that they're really, they didn't move that stuff. You know, so it, it, it was like, it has to go here. That's the way to think of it. It has to go here and how do we get it here? Okay, so um, I mean, Houston, is great because you can get to Houston either through the Panama Canal or you can go to LA and buy, put it by train, right? So Houston's beautiful because you get, you know, it's pretty easy to go both ways, right? And so certainly, and this will be a, one of the punchlines, I mean, bam, the minute they could see that this, that this thing was really slowing down, n you know, everything to Houston goes directly to Houston, not, none of it through LA, right? Um, and there was even a little bit of getting to Chicago through Houston, but it's really tiny, and I think we would have seen more of that if the thing had, had gone longer, okay? But so that substitution is really hard, right? Because, I mean, you can see why there's a substitution here because, you know, there's good things and bad things about going through LA to get to Houston. I mean, good things, it's, the ocean freight is cheaper compared to going all around the Panama Canal, and it's pretty fast. I mean, the disadvantage is you have to pay for the rail, which is, ends up making it more expensive right now. But to, to get to Chicago through the Panama Canal, you have to both take all the long thing and you have to pay for rail and it takes, you know, yes. So does Walmart usually uh, charter whole container ships? No, 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 they don't usually charter, they, they, no. They're huge, these container ships, so um, yeah. Okay, so I better get into it. Uh, so yeah, so, so we're gonna try to measure the scale. Of I think I said what we're, we're trying to do with the paper. And we just got to this point about the literature, right? Um, so there's operations research guys, right? And they, they work with Walmart and they tell Walmart about, you know, well, let's see, where should you put these things and plug numbers through the computer and come up with values of time and so forth, right? Um, so they know a lot of things and so I'm, we're, we're using some of the, what they know and, and some of the numbers they're putting into their, their models, right? But uh, there's some other things that they, they're not gonna know about, right? So part of what Walmart's is doing is trying to hide from unions, like for their DCs, they do not want those things to be unionized. They're, they, uh, they, you know, if, you, if, you, if, if there's a, uh, the union sh shuts down one of their DC, it just shuts down the entire, the, the, you know, the, the, the firm, right? Whereas if, uh, uh, you know, a, a particular distribution center gets shut down further downstream, well, they've got 42 of them and they can substitute across them, right? So uh, this is like a, a point where, where there's leverage, right? And so in any case, um, uh, this part of the country is pretty good, good, safe from unions, right? We all know about the South. I mean, some of my other work is mm -hmm. about you can, you know, you're in pretty good shape avoiding unions as part of the country. This, not so much, right? In fact, there was a strike there a couple years ago. I mean, they didn't get a union in, but there's also a strike there. So, so these are some of things that Walmart's going to care about. But you know, they're not, you're not gonna be able to interview them and say, well, tell me what your, that you know, compensating va value is. I mean, so we just have to get that from their revealed preference. So, so that's what we're doing. That's different than lo logistics guys. We're looking at choice and then working backwards, whereas logistic guys, like, you know, it's more calibrate models and, and tell them what to do. Okay, so, um, and we're doing some more things than the logistic guys in a lot of ways. But let's get down to business. Um, uh, so just go through this model. It's simple, but lots of notation. Um, so let's take a particular unit of good or container indexed by G. It's going to have a particular product type. Actually, most containers sometimes have multiple goods in it. And we'll, in the data, that's the way we'll treat it. But for now, let's think of it. It's just a, a particular product. Like this is an SKU, you know, particular good. It has an origination I. Now we're going to... Um, now take tomatoes, like for Walmart, uh, the tomatoes, you know, will depend on uh, where they get those tomatoes, probably depends on where the Walmart is, right? In the East Coast, they'll get the, you know, because that's something you get locally, okay? But the stuff that we're talking about today, the stuff that's coming in on ocean containers, that only comes from one place. I mean, I can see that in the data. It's very, very rare for Walmart to have like two sources of the same product, okay? So there's, um, there's an origination, 
And for a particular nine-digit product code, it's going to be one, not just one country, one city. Okay? So that's that. And then uh, there's a particular port that gets chosen. There's a particular import DC. And then we have a particular ultimate location. Okay, so we've got a lot of letters there, but let's add an M now. Um, we're going to think of there being at every ultimate location um, uh, an inelastic demand uh, for product H uh, of this amount. Okay, that, that Walmart just takes as given. We need to deliver this amount to that location. Um, and we think about this. It could be random variable, but the firm sees it before the order decision. Okay, so the story is, you know, at the national level, Walmart's going to set a price. We're going to be thinking of Walmart setting a constant price across the whole country, right? And so, of course, demand's elastic to whatever that price is. But once Walmart sets this constant price across the whole country, then um, consumers, there's going to be a certain realized consumer demand, and the, the logistics group at Walmart, their job is to make sure you get the goods to that store so when the customers show up, they, they get it so they didn't get all mad at Walmart because they, they, they expected to be able to buy, um, you, know, uh, you know, whatever this product is and it's not there, okay? How is that really, I mean, for a high transport cost good that's coming from China, do they charge the same in New York as, as in California even though it costs? Um, they're going to be using their same uh, allocation shares, um, you know, uh, uh, I, that, I, I can do a better job of that, but my sense is that uh, they're, uh, you know. So um, like Fiji Water or something, right? Which is, I just mm -hmm. pretend I mean, see if it's the same price. Well, Fiji Water, I think, is the same thing. I, I was going to, I might even do a separate study on them. They're, uh, 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 yeah, I'm pretty sure that these that's companies. The same price in California and New York. Right. Then I think that's well, Fiji Water is, right? I mean, uh, yeah. I, I, that's a, it's a, I, I, I need to add this as one, I, I mean, I was going through a couple things that I'm, I'm sort of nailing things down out of these assumptions, but I'm, I'm operating under the assumption that they forget about the transportation cost, right? And we already see that a little bit, right? They forget about the transportation cost for in India goods relative to the China goods, right? There's no sense, oh, India is closer to the East Coast. We're going to take in, we're, that would mean that we're going to, there'll be relatively more goods of Indian goods sold to the people on the East Coast, right? That's not how it works, right? So I already take that as some evidence that they're sort of, they're blocking out the transportation costs, right? So I think that's, 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 that's one way to answer your question. Yes? Um, to what extent are online stores important for Walmart? And where, where are those goods stored? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I think it's increasingly be, it, more and more important. Uh, and some of that online stuff was, was sort of piggybacking off of um, these, these DCs that we're looking at, and now they have some of their own DCs. Um, so uh, I'm, um, to be honest, the, I'm not actually, uh, I mean, I'm going to take very, very uh, high resolution geography. Uh, so, you know, basically partition the country into a thousand places, right? And so, you know, but mostly MSA. And so I'm thinking of um, these five DCs delivering the goods to that MSA, MSA and, and whether it's online or through the retail stores isn't, isn't, isn't going to be important for what I'm doing here, um, for what we're doing here. By the way, I should have, um, Ethan Singer, my co-author, you know, I should certainly acknowledge him, all the work that we've been doing together on this. Okay, so um, let's get back to that model. Okay, so we got this inelastic demand, uh, and so now uh, the cost for a particular route. We're starting at the, uh, the source location. We're getting to an ultimate location, and so we can break this thing down. You know, there's a, a freight cost to get from uh, the original source to a particular port in the country. That's J, and then from the port to the distrib distribution center. I mean, that's going to be a pretty minor thing for. Um, uh, Savannah, because the distribution center is like 50 miles away, right? So that's going to be a pretty small number uh, for that case. Uh, but to get to Chicago from LA, or, that's going to be a bigger number, um, more like $1,000 in that case. Uh, and then this to get from the distribution center to the particular MSA 
where we're, you know, the ultimate consumption is happening. All right? And so this is, we're just going to go get data on all of these things. Um, and then we have to calculate the you know, elapsed time in the journey, right? Because time is money or it's worth it's some money. Um, and so you know, we can think about th this in units of time and then um, some weighting parameter that in principle can depend on the good. Um, okay, so that's the cost. Um, we're going to also allow for an unobserved cost per container unit. So, and there's going to be one at the port level. So, uh, you know, uh, Savannah has a bit of a little subsidy uh, that they want to get more people bringing stuff through their ports, right? So that would be a, a negative number for Savannah. Uh, for LA, they were talking about a $90 tax and never did it, but they, you know, they got an implicit tax because there's, you know, a lot of congestion and things take at least a day to get off the, the you know, the dock. And so that would be a, a positive number uh, for, for LA. Um, and then we've got, um, and, and it's going to be some sort of type one extreme value, you know, the usual thing added to that, right? And so this we don't directly observe, we're going to have to estimate it. Um, and same thing, there's, you know, a, a DC specific cost, right? Uh, Savannah is in a safe non-union territory, so that's going to be a low number compared to Chicago. I mean, of course, you, Chicago, you're going to move away from it's not literally Chicago, right? It's probably 50 or 60 miles away, because if you're in Chicago, you would definitely be union, right? <laughs> so you get away, but still, you, you know, there's this, you know, the, the union organizers can drive 50 miles. Um, so anyway, that, that's, that's how that works. All right, so um, the timing is uh, we're going to solve this port choice problem, you know, we, 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 uh, you know after we make the, the DC thing, right? So we're going to think about there's, a, there's that little epsilon shock we had here. Let's think about that being realized like late in the game, um, but the firm can respond to it, right? They've already made the, 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 the longer run decision, which is how do you allocate your uh, the import shares across the distribution center. So that's kind of fixed in the, in the, uh, but, but in the short run. But this thing is, it, it, the port choice is not. So, um, so let's pick a port, all right? We're trying to get, a, a container to a particular distribution center, and we're just going to have to add um, the cost, the freight cost to get up to the port level, uh, or, 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 or maybe even to the, finally, to get to the DC. Yes? Um, did you say earlier that you could think about an, an, a type as being uh, the origination specific? Uh, yes, each type good comes from one origination. So then that well, it's um, this is a time. This is a parameter, yeah. which it, we're, we're going to allow to be different uh, for the type of good. Okay, this is this is a, a, a waiting. This is the elapsed time. I mean, what is that time? Because to well, it's the time of money. It's about. I'm trying to convert uh, days in transit to a dollar so cost. You have, more than, you have different products and different like um, trucks, right? Going right. To Right. So we're gonna. You, so right now, I, I'm 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 imagining. I'm, I'm being general here, where this this you know cost per day is allowed to depend. The different H is an index for a good. Right. Right. So each good, um, you know, you might think um, certain goods have a high value, might have a, a higher cost of time, higher inventory holding costs, and so forth. And uh, right. So you would imagine that might be different across goods. As it turns out. We're going to treat the general merchandise goods uh, uh, all the same, um, and, they're, and, and they're going to have, uh, you know, one number. It's going to turn out to be pretty small, uh, $12 per day is, is what we'll find. Uh, and then uh, fashion goods, uh, you know, uh, clothing is considered, you know, you need faster turnover. Um, time is a bigger consideration, and so that estimate is something more like $80 a day. Um, yeah. Um, so... Uh, you, you see all this stuff. We have this little unobserved piece here uh, uh, that's, that's uh, uh, what is it? Uh, it? It's not port I, port J. Port J is, is what this should be. Um, and so the standard logic choice problem, um, uh, you're going to get the normal sh uh, port share probabilities, and then you can use this uh, formula for the expected minimum uh, uh, cost of, of um, uh, t port cost to get to a particular DC, right? So condition, we're going to Chicago, and yes, we're, we can choose, to get to Chicago, we can choose between, 
using Seattle or LA, or you know, if you're coming from India, you would go by way of New York, the port of New York, right? So you have these choices. And so you know, after being presented with these choices, this is the, the minimum uh, uh, cost to get to uh, that DC. Um, and so then uh, we have a, 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 a uh, we have to now pick our DCs, right? And so we're going to now allocate goods across DCs. And um, so we can take the port cost as being solved for from the, the previous problem, just plug that in. Um, and then we have the rest of the transportation to get to, you know, from particular DC to particular locations around the, around the country, right? Um, and so um, um, now here is where we have to make a decision about whether the firm can customize based on the origin of the good, right? Do you treat goods from India differently then you treat goods from China, uh, or do you just treat them all the same? So this is the, we can fully customize. And so we're going to um, uh, treat um, the origin I is where this thing is coming from. And so that's going to affect uh, this, uh, uh, you know, the port cost is going to vary by depending on where this good is coming from. And so you can figure out the optimal share um, will depend upon um, the good, okay? But, um, and so then this is the optimal share, uh, how a DC is, is allocating, um, or to get to a particular final destination, which uh, d DCs are being used, right? But now we can aggregate that up to say, well, now what's the overall share of that distribution center by looking at its shares of selling to all the different locations in the whole country, right? And so in many cases, this will just be, you know, zero or close to zero, right? Where, where you know, Rhode Island is getting nothing from the LA DC, right? And then there's going to be some, you know, areas, you know, it just depends on how, how much uh, uh, of that little uh, different differentiation, you know, the little logit thing that you stick in, how, how much you get uh, uh, spreading. Okay, but um, you, you use these shares, right, at the aggregate shares, you invert them out to pull out the, the, the YK. Okay, um, and so if, if, you, uh, if you can't customize, let's just say it's a constraint that you have to treat all the goods the same, right, and so that, that problem then becomes, uh, you know, it's, all, it's like you, you, uh, you, you sort of have to use one average rule um, at the DC Okay, these are the shares. When we're sending stuff around the country, we've got to use the same um, rule for every good that's coming in, okay? And so in, as you expected, you're just now just going to take the average. Um, and here now you're going to be averaging across the, 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 the source countries, right? And so um, the more weight that source country is, the more you're going to care about that, that, that country, right? And so, yes? Okay, well, we'll, we're going to look at both of those things, okay? I mean, I, but mostly what I'm going to be doing is showing, I'll be, I, when I'm done all this and I've estimated these things, I can go backwards and say, now, what if I take away, and instead of having five DCs, what would you get from three, okay? And then that's the $200, $300 difference. You lose that amount, okay? So there's some fixed cost to doing it, but now I'm looking at, well, this is, how, this is an estimate of the change in marginal cost, okay? So that, that's part of the game. Uh, what is Oh, um, it's some total, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a sum, it's, uh, for all the H or for what? well, I'm a little confused. It's, it's what you think it should be. Okay. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Great yeah. answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so now we got to get to the data and we started a little late. What, what time, how much time do I have? Uh, 30 minutes. I don't have 30 minutes now, do I? I don't think so, right? It's one hour, right? Okay. Yes. Okay, but we have to, the time for discussion, I think. You started at 5, at 5 or 5, so 6 or 5. Okay, but I, well, I, I'll end earlier than that. So, oh, to, oh, yeah. yeah, the time for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so transaction level data. So, um, the, um, in order to, uh, you know, 
import goods in, into the U.S., you have to file paperwork with customs. Uh, there's a lot of work now that's using in, in the, the confidential uh, aspect of that data um, at the U.S. Census, in, 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 you know, uh, at one of those data research centers, and and, and that's really cool. Uh, uh, but there's also a public version, a related version. All right, it's not exactly the same thing, but it's collected as part of the same process, right? For, o for just for ocean-borne imports, okay? And I think this dates back 100, 200 years where, um, you, know, the, the, you know, shippers wanted to be able to look in the newspaper and, and see what was coming in, okay? And so um, the customs sells this, this stuff to, you know, newspapers or, you know, resellers. Um, uh, uh, and it has, a, it's beautiful information and we'll see it, but it's for every, uh, it's a bill of lading, so it's every transaction. And we'll, we'll look and see in a little bit what, what, what's, what's in there, but it's, it's pretty rich, okay? And so I have a subscription from one of these providers who bought it from the customs, and um, that's, what, that's what I'm using. Um, I, I need information about the times in transit, right? That's a key parameter. Uh, I mean, you can see it's a big difference. <laughs> well, you know, it takes another 20 days to go around the Panama Canal, right? So that's a, that's a lot of time. So um, to, to, have, to say something about that, well, we have the GPS devices on all these ships. And um, so I, you know, I subscribe to some other service that tells me for all these ships for the past couple of years, um, you know, where the ships have you know, been in harbor, and, and then I, we can figure out you know, their time in transit. Now, we need ocean freight <laughs> rates. Uh, you know, that was a big hassle trying to figure out what to do with, with the freight rates. Um, you know, there's some public indices like uh, on spot markets, right? But big companies like Walmart, they don't, they, they have longer term contract rates. And I think that's how they make these decisions, like more long term about these. So we want, I need contract rates. Um, th now, there's really nice uh, public data uh, on um, freight rates by the census. But, um, you know, by these detailed cell counts, right, uh, uh, detailed cells, industry, and so forth, and, and they have also the kilograms. So that sounds like it's going to be great, right, because you, you have for a particularly narrow, narrowly defined product, HS code, you have, um, you know, the, the, in a particular month, the total spending on freight, and, and I know what port it comes from. So I, I, I know not the, the U.S. port. I know the country. So it sounds great, okay? The problem is that all of this stuff is, is priced by the container. And so, uh, uh, and, and, and it's all, really, it's, it has to be about volume, okay? And so there's just wide variation in price per kilogram, but not that much variation in price per container because it's, it's based on the container. So, so what, what I've done here is, um, is I've, um, we've, we've tried to collect um, we've kind of taken this public data and merged it with this other data, and so now we can say something about the containers. And the hits rate's not fantastic, but we've got 18 million builds of lading that we're merging on, and, we're, and we have, we're, so we, we have freight rate information where, I, where I've now taken the public census data and find out, well, what was that transaction, and, and, and uh, you know, how many containers were involved with that transaction, and we can use that as the freight rate. Um, we have a geography of uh, Interregional trade, so I've already mentioned this, we're partitioning the U.S. into a thousand parts, mostly MS, uh, MSAs. Uh, the domestic freight rates and transit times, you know, we're using, um, you know, one of these experts in, in the operations research who, who, has, who has made public uh, some of this information, then we've also corroborated with our own. Um, and then uh, local demand, well, where does this stuff have to go? Well, we have data on where the Walmart sales by stores and, and and store counts and so forth. And so that's going to, we're using that information to see, well, where does the stuff ultimately have to get? Um, so here's, here are two bills of lading. Uh, just as an example, this is a, 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 a car seats. Um, and there, this had two containers. And it was, you know, you got the date it arrived at, the, at Los Angeles, right? But um, on my record here, I can tell where it's unladed is like where it comes off the boat, right? But this is where it went through customs. It was in Houston. So that, now I know, okay, this, this, is, this is going to the Houston, D.C. Um, I actually have the name of the shipper. I've got Walmart as the consignee. I've got information about the containers. 
you know, going to use this. To, uh, some of these bills of lading actually uh, have the same container across bills of lading because it's only partial, right? So it's really important that I have this. This is an example of something that's not in the census. They don't have the container information um, at the, you know, the confidential data that everybody's using. Um, and it's got, you know, on each one of these containers, there were 1,056 car seats. Um, and here's this point about the volume, right? So this, there's, uh, the, the, there's 63 cubic meters. So basically, that's a full container. I think a container can only hold 67 uh, cubic feet. So it's pretty much full. But weight-wise, it's only 8,000 kilograms, right? Well, you can actually put up to 25,000 kilograms without changing your, your charge, right? And so, so Walmart, all of these guys, that kind of stuff is, is basically you bang into the capacity constraint on the volume margin, not the weight margin. So it's critical to get um, the, at the container level, not the kilogram pricing. I mean, there's other things. The water, Fiji water, there's, that's weight, right? And so they actually can get close to the 25,000 by having only a 20-foot container rather than a 40-foot container, right? It's that dense and, and especially helped by the fact that they make the bottle square, right? And so, you know, for, for water shipping, it's by weight, but for the junk that Walmart sells, it's by, it's by volume. Uh, They do, but lots of, in this particular case, it's such a big order that they have, um, it's, a whole, it's two containers full of car seats, the same car seat. Or we'll see that in a minute, what, it, what the thing is. This is a funny one. This is, this is HTTVs, and there's a shipment with 417 containers. So who, were you asking about whether one, this happens to be 10% of, of the, this huge container ship was full of just uh, these 50-inch TVs. Okay, 417 containers, each having uh, 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 300 uh, uh, TVs. Like, you know, right? This piece count is like, the, it's a box of a, of a TV. Each one is different, okay? Um, and then here's the product number, and this is what I'm, the real money in the data set here, right? Because um, I, the, I've got this nine-digit code and that, okay, and I've got the word item, so I can go search for it and pull that out, right? Um, and there's also a, uh, an HS code, right? So I'm going to need that because the fashion, uh, you know, clothing and, and is different than general merchandise and has a different distribution center, so it's very important that we, we get that. So, uh, oh, oh, you're asking, one, this is a big thing. I, I can't believe I didn't mention that. Notice it doesn't say anything about Walmart. So it's an option to mask yourself and say, nope, I don't want uh, the, the shipper or consignee uh, field revealed in this data set that goes out to the public, right? And so Walmart avails itself of that option 99.9% .9 of the time, right? So this is one particular case where somebody was asleep at the wheel and, and, and they, 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 they forgot to do that, right? But so, you know, you go and you do this and you go, okay, what are the Walmarts? And then uh, what's this GLN number? Oh, the global location number of Walmart uh, is this exact number. Okay, well, let me just do a search, you know, between 2007 and 2015 for this number, right? And boom, I get like 1.5 million uh, bills of ladings, right? I mean, then I can do a little search. I can find sometimes Walmart's in here, other places. Um, any case, I got about 1.7 million containers. Uh, this is in thousands, right? Um, over the sample period, and, and just based on other information, um, it's it's a, it's slightly more than half of all the containers that Walmart has has imported in. So it's a pretty pretty good sample, I think. Um, and so you know this is going to be one thing. Where is this stuff coming from? Mostly from China, right? To 86 percent, but the, that's including I mean the bananas and from Guatemala, which and Costa Rica, which. Another couple percent. I'm not going to be. That's that stuff's going to be thrown out. It's just we're looking from, you know, like stuff from Asia, and so so China is, uh, you know, overwhelming uh, 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 the source of this stuff, right? So let's. Um, we're going to get this down. We have a product counts. There's there's when we go and we think about pr product year. Most of these products are only around for a year anyway. So let's think of it at a level as a product year. Um, we have. Uh, 252,000 different unique products. Uh, uh, the, the mean containers 
per product is 4.4, but things are pretty skewed, right? Some of these, a lot of them are just partial containers, um, and so the, the, the median is only is less than a full container, right? So you're sharing containers with other goods. Um, it's going to be important to, to classify the good because they have different systems. So fashion may be sound like an oxymoron for stuff from Walmart, but uh, you know the clothing and 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 shoes. Um, just goes to a single distribution center, whereas general merchandise, that's the five distribution center system we talked about, and SAMS is yet something else. Um, so let me, uh, let's talk about what they're doing with fashion, because that's, you know, an interesting first look. Um, and we're going to be breaking down what they're doing uh, by um, the source country. So, um, you know, China, South China Sea, these, you know, other countries, Singapore and so forth, the Indian Ocean. And it's, it's, it's very sharp if I just look at cases. So it does take products. They go to just one distribution center, um, five or more shipments. Okay? And to which, so they only pick one, right? Why, why are they doing it differently? Think, remember, uh, clothing has all these sizes, right? And so you just, it gets too messy to have all these different sizes and all these five different things, right? So even Walmart does not have scale economies enough to um, run a, a, you know, a, a four corners model for clothing except for like flip-flops. So flip-flops counts as the shoes and it's, you know, and you know, it's called 98 cent flip-flops. Well, you know, they, they think, that, hey, that's like more like the junk. And so we'll run that through the five, okay? So I, I, I'm, I'm sweeping them out. And so the point here is that they're very responsive in terms of which of these DCs to use to put, put all this stuff, the one. So if you're coming from China, they're splitting from Houston and Chicago. South China Sea is going to be more oriented towards the East Coast, right? And so there, okay, come on, we're going to be mostly just going to Houston because we don't want to have to go through LA so much. And then, and then Savannah on the East Coast starts picking things up. And then finally, if you're from the Indian Ocean, it's virtually all Savannah, right? Because now you're East Coast oriented and just bring it through Savannah. Okay, so here is um, the fact that I said that, you're, um, that you don't customize um, um, by origination. Okay, so we're going to focus on the general merchandise goods um, and these are going to be averages of shares. Now for each of these particular products I'm going to look at the allocation um, throughout the, the year on average across the five uh, DCs. Um, we, we, let's just skip this because we're in initial time. Let's jump to this one. I like this. This is a very clean sample. And what this is, there's, there, there are 11,000 of these goods where they were a one-off order. So Walmart just said, look, we're just going to do one shipment to each DC. And they all come in about the same time. You know, it's pretty interesting the way Walmart sort of schedules all this stuff. So they all come in kind of at the same time. And they just, there's like one to each of the DCs. Okay, so that's kind of clean because, you know, there's some measurement error here. Sometimes I'm going to miss something, right? And then I'm going to get my shares a little, little warped, right? If I miss one thing, then I'm not getting the shares right. So these, you know, it's very clear what they're up to. They're doing one for each. Um, and, I mean, the point that I want to make here, okay, well, obviously, most of everything's from China. But, but, but here's the Indian Ocean. I mean, the, the shares are not that different or, you know, they're essentially the same. Okay, they're, you know, they're treating India the same. If, in our model, if we simulate how they should treat India, if they were free to do things differently, they would do things a lot differently. The shares would, would, would change very significantly. And I think the next version of the paper will I'll, I'll be showing you what, what that would be. Okay, um, so um, um, poor choice. Yeah, so DC choice, conditional origin, and the 5D thing, they're not doing anything, 5DC. A uh, poor choice, yeah, sure they're doing things, right? So this is uh, now to get, uh, if you're from China, getting goods from China um, and you want to get to Chicago, well, most of the time you're using LA um, or sort of a combination of LA and Seattle. Um, but if you now you're moving to South China Sea, uh, LA is starting to look a little better. You're coming more from the south. Uh, and then from the Indian Ocean, you're like, uh, we're coming from Chicago, right? So obviously the poor choices are responding. Okay, now this disruption. I've already mentioned um, there was labor trouble in ja January 2015. Um, so here's the labor trouble. 
we're, we're, I'm using our, our GPS data on, okay, so we've matched all our shipments to the boats, right? And we have the boats and then we match that to the GPS information, right? So I can tell you uh, in, uh, for Walmart shipments, right, how long it's taken to get here. So this is stuff from Shanghai or, or uh, to, to uh, or um, Shenzhen uh, is taking 15 days. This is the beginning of uh, 2014. Uh, the median is about 15 days. This is the blue, 15, 15, 15. Okay, the, the contract expires in July, but they're just, you know, hmm, not so clear what's happening. It's things, things, things. Okay, suddenly things start going up. Uh, the time it takes to, to, to get things unloaded at LA, and then the shit hits the fan January, uh, and it goes over 30 days, right? So you can just see, and this is a two-month period where the stuff's taking you know, almost twice what it normally takes, and then things get better. I mean, it's congested, so a little bit slow, and it's all better by then, right? This other thing is the fraction of goods Walmart is, 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 is taking through LA conditional on getting to Houston, right? And so they're, you know, back and forth, a little bit back and forth. But okay, it's almost like they can see this happening. It's going to be bad in LA. Everything now, you know, the probability of the stuff going through LA drops to zero. And now, okay, it looks fine now, so we'll go back to using LA to get to Houston, right? So very, very quick response to, to right? But, um, yeah, so the port stuff, when you can change, you can change, right? Um, but the shares, these are, uh, you know, smooth uh, shares across the five DCs. So they opened up Chicago in like this date here. So you can see, you know, it sort of takes a little while to ramp up, okay? But this is when um, the, the strike's happening right here in January, and there's just minor things going on with the shares, right? So they're still using the same DCs. They can't change. They can't suddenly say, okay, let the DC in Savannah get the, you know, the, the, the 98 cent flip-flops to California. That, 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 that's not, I mean, at least in the, the time horizon we're looking at. I mean, obviously, if the port of LA were shut for a year, then, well, then they would just start doing other things. Okay, so now we have to estimate this model. We're running out of time. Um, and so first, we're just going to, um, estimate uh, the port choice problem, uh, and we're going to get from that a value of time I've already mentioned. We're going to get a, this product differentiation parameter of the ports. Uh, we're going to get like these little, um, we're going to absorb, like there's a, 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 some intermodal cost to get from LA to Houston. We're going to absorb them um, in, in, you know, special, uh, you know, fixed uh, uh, terms. Okay, and so this minus 800 is the relative difference to go to Houston, unlaid in Houston and enter in Houston versus unlading in LA and then putting on a train to Houston. Well, that's the, the price of the, 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 the train, okay? So we're gonna take that and now we're gonna have the cost to use each port to get to a particular, the expected minimum cost of, of all your choices of ports to get to a DC. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to um, now back out uh, uh, what the, the, the DC level costs are. Um, and here I feel it's a, it's a little bit, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, it seems too big of an advantage. So Savannah has like a $900 advantage per container over LA. It seems pretty high to me. Uh, you know, there may be some other costs that we're, we haven't fully built in. Um, but in any case, um, uh, you know, that's, I mean, Walmart loves using uh, the Savannah uh, DC, and it's paying extra cost in transportation uh, uh, to, to, to do that, and that's why that number is what it is. Now, uh, you know, uh, I'll just do it quickly. Once we have to estimate the model, we, we've imposed to estimate the model that they have to treat all goods the same, and we could say, well, how much is that a burden to Walmart? and we can free it up. Okay, now change the shares uh, to specify for each country. Now it's not gonna benefit, this is the dollar saving per container. I mean, China, is, it's only take 28 cents, but that shouldn't be a surprise because China's already, you know, very high percentage of, of, of what you're getting and then, and then it's Taiwan and those kind of places are close to China anyway. So there's just essentially no value to custom, you know, changing to, to do what you're doing to China because you already are maximizing to China. 
but for the Indian Ocean countries, you know, they're much smaller shares, and, and you could tweak things and make about, you know, extra $40 per, con you know, container, which is, you know, it's like 1%. So it's, it's some money, but not a big, big number. So, that, you know, that's why Walmart's doing it. If that was a big number, Walmart would, would do something about it, but it isn't. So it's, it's simpler just to keep, you know, keep things simple. Okay, so here, I mean, I have we're just about out of time here, but, uh, um, so these are the, you know, you asked what the experiment was. So now we, 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 you know, for general merchandise, we take the five and we say, now we're going to simulate, well, what would your cost be if you, you don't have Chicago and Houston anymore? All right, so of course costs are going to go up, and this is how much it goes up, um, you know, it's on the order of like 200, uh, $250, right? And then we could say, now I'm really going to stick you. You can only use one DC, and here's the different possible ones, okay? And um, does that include load errors in there? It does. You could also do it without. Well, there's no. Uh, um, you could just pretend they're not really costs. Oh, I see. Um, that's a good. Uh, I think it, it. I think we're. It's just that little constant term when in the one case, right? Uh, but um, yeah, I, I'll. I'll have to think about that. Um, I, I don't have any time left. Uh, let me, let me just say something that uh, this is doing. Now, the, the places you would pick um, are pretty close to what, you, what they are doing for, general uh, for fashion, OK? So for um, fashion, basically from the Indian Ocean, you know, they are picking Savannah, right? And you can see, well, of all the one places you could have, uh, Savannah is always the lowest, right? So that, if you had to do just one, this is what you're going to do. Um, and now as we start moving towards China, you, there's a, you can start saying, okay, now we'll start using Houston, right? So it, we are sort of, you know, corroborating this thing. It's not 100%, but by, you know, we can ration, by basing what they're doing for the five, we can close to rationalize what they're doing for the ones. Um, let me um, just wrap up. Uh, the, the other experiment is the cost of disruption. So I'd like to simulate uh, what happens, uh, what, what happened to Walmart back in January, you know, uh, uh, what, did they, what did they do and, and, and how much did the episode cost them? Okay, so the first thing is, well, we saw them substitute. They were getting, uh, sending 80% uh, of the things were going directly to Houston. This is of the general merchandise. And now they changed that to 100%. So we can think of what's the, the equivalent tax to get them to do that. Um, and it's something like adding a you know, $300 tax is pretty close to enough to get them to just say, hey, here's, what, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to send it over there. Um, and then the next thing we could ask is under these different systems, um, and then what is flexible? Can I change, in response to the shocks, can I change the port and the DC? Um, um, and, uh, you know, this is the, uh, the most flexible, this is the least, right? And, and this is just going to be per dollar of disruption tax, uh, what's the cost to, to Walmart for, of their entire distribution uh, costs? And, uh, you know, the more flexible they are, these, these numbers are going to go down, all right? And um, I'm running short of time. Um, I'm going to pick this as my uh, benchmark to look at because, um, uh, you know, I've got only LA disrupted because actually the whole West Coast was having trouble, but it, the trouble happened at different times. So Walmart was able to, mm, okay, trouble in LA, let's, let's use Seattle. Trouble in, uh, you know, so let's, uh, uh, focus on this column, and um, which numbers are relevant? Uh, this is not relevant because we just argued that DC share was not flexible, um, but the poor choice is flexible, so the 23 cents uh, on the dollar, if we take the $300 estimate that I just talked about, multiply it by 23 cents times 87,000 containers they brought in, that gives us 6 million. Walmart, if, if, you know, now what's the aggregate cost? That's a, that's a different number to try to figure out. But uh, Walmart is on the order of 1 50th of all the containers. If everybody else was like Walmart, then we get up to 300 million. My guess is, and this is going to be part of the project, um, other firms are going to be hurt more because Walmart, um, you know, has more opportunities to be flexible. Um, so we get, uh, you know, uh, 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 this is an uh, understatement. So I, I, have, I, I better stop. Um, yeah. Carlos. Any questions? So this cost that you are saying is cost for Walmart was borne by Walmart in the end and ended up raising prices and passing through the Oh, sure. Uh, um, yeah, well, we're, we're, 
This was the cost of the, um, the uh, logistics planner whose job was to bring the goods in at each of these places, right? So if possible um, that, uh, you know, they were able to raise prices. I don't know about that. That's a, that's a great point. So this is a condition on that uh, you had to get this amount of good to these places. How much, did that, how much more costly was that? It's not, uh, it's not a, a welfare number. Yes? So um, can another reason for having multiple PCs be that there's actually a second order domestic transportation effect, that the uh, demand or shipment warmer needs from a certain DC node uh, goes down, and therefore the rates also will go down per DC, because uh, overall um, maybe there's congestion. No, OK, that's a beautiful point. So I, I wanted to actually talk about that. I, 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 um, the, right now, I'm, act, I'm taking a marginal cost estimate, right? And then I'm shutting down a DC and changing shares elsewhere and assuming those marginal costs would be the same, okay? But maybe they make investments, there's some scale economies or diseconomies, in which case those marginal costs would, would differ, right? And so what I think is very critical for this exercise, um, at least to have like, uh, you know, robustness analysis, you know, make some different assumptions. You know, if you just picked one DC for the whole country, it may affect the shipping rates, good or bad, um, at a particular because you would tend to use a certain set of ports, and uh, that's part of the scale economies or diseconomies at Walmart's. You know, probably mostly economies, uh, and I mean, I, I can even do bring some data to that right. So I, I I have all this data on the freight rates, and I can try to estimate the advantage Walmart gets from scale, um, and and sort of discipline the choice of these parameters, but absolutely, I, I, we need to have as the, you know, this, okay, we assume marginal costs were constant. You paid a fixed cost to change your marginal costs, but now let's change the volume and see what happens. At the, very good, yes, thank you. You could also model the, the port side of the market, so now if you want to model how many workers you hire in Savannah port to control the freight that comes in and also what is the price you charge. Right. Uh, Okay, so, so, so absolutely, um, um, so Walmart is looking around, you know, saying, hey, we're going to bring um, stuff to, the, the Houston, D.C. was opened in um, 2005, mid-2005. For sure, Walmart talked to the, you know, local, uh, you know, government agencies and say, look, give us money. We are bringing all this business and there's going to be a lot more people to follow because once we bring, this, there's going to be more shipping coming here and then because there's more shipping, more people are going to want to come. So all of those things are um, um, the way the world works and, and, and Walmart. So it, I think that's what you're encouraging me to do, somehow uh, putting more. Uh, this it does relate to the other point, though, because where Walmart goes, there's, they're big enough to affect um, uh, the terms and, 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 and shipping patterns and all kinds of things and prices for sure. But also the shipping is critical. Uh, you know, the, the, the times are very, um, you know, very important. I mean, uh, just having Walmart run such a tight ship that they need to have high, uh, high volume of, you know, frequency of, 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 of trips. Okay, well, we use all the time. All the questions? All right.